This video will show you how to set up Chrome Remote Desktop to control your Windows PC from your Chromebook. There's only one way to set up the PC to receive the remote access. Uh, there are several ways to set up the Chromebook to control the PC, but we'll get to that in a minute. So open up Chrome, search for Chrome Remote Desktop. It should autofill. Make sure you click on remotedesktop.google.com. That's the link. Click on Get Started. You have to sign into your Google account. Make sure you sign into the Google account that you're using on your Chromebook. Now, once you're in, I already have one computer that I'm controlling remotely, but it's not the computer I'm on right now. You're looking at the PC. So you click the arrow, download Chrome Remote Desktop. It'll take you to the Chrome Web Store. Add to Chrome. Add the extension. Uh, I don't want to sync this stuff, so I, I hit the X on that. And um, you should say no thanks here because it'll keep popping up. This is if you want to use this PC to control other computers, which I'm not going to do. So I'm going to close it out. And I'm going to click accept and install. And the thing in the bottom right that downloaded the MSI, that will then start to install on the PC. Once I hit yes. And run. Now you have to pick a name, it'll autofill. That's good enough for me, so I hit next. Choose a PIN. This is kind of the password to get into the PC when you're trying to control it remotely. And I'm not going to click the Help Improve Chrome, but you can if you want, it doesn't change anything. Now for some reason it took a while to start this one. I think it just kind of got hung up on what it was showing me. So I waited a little bit and then hit refresh. Again, say no thanks to that pop-up. If you change your mind, you can hit the plus sign in the address bar. It's the one over there. But we're not going to do it, so close it out. Now, once I refreshed, it says it's online which is great. Now we'll switch over to the Chromebook. So now I'm on the Chromebook. I open up Chrome browser. Again, do a search for Chrome Remote Desktop. And since I'm already logged in under my Gmail account, it immediately finds the PC that I'm looking for. It's got both of them there. I click on the new one, Sager. And it asks me for that pin I entered before. Enter it again, this time on the Chromebook. And bam, I'm in. I'm right at the desktop of the PC, controlling it. It gives a little message there. It pops up anytime you touch the keyboard or the mouse on the remote PC to let you know you're being remote controlled. And you can make this a little bit bigger by going full screen on the browser. And then I can do anything I could do on the main computer remotely with my Chromebook. And you also have this little sidebar here for different things like disconnecting, scaling, sending control out, delete, printing the screen. You can mess around with anything you need to do, but I haven't changed anything over here. Click it back. Of course, when that's open, you don't see it on the PC. Now, when you want to disconnect, you can either click that little stop sharing button in the center of the screen, or you can click on the side menu, open it up and click on disconnect. Boom, you're out. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned there are several ways to control the PC from the Chromebook. That was the first way, which is through the website. There's actually about two to three more ways to do it. The second one I'm going to show you now is using the Chrome Web Browser extension from the Chrome Web Store. This is the thing we didn't do on the PC that popped up, but we're going to do it here on the Chromebook. It installs very quickly. I might have already had it installed, so I'll show you here is the page that you go to if you're looking for it from the Chrome Web Store. Remember, this is the extension. So now that we've got it up, I'm going to actually compare the Chrome Web Browser, browser extension with just using the web page. So you can kind of see them side by side. 
as you can see, they're basically the same thing. You can only log in on one at a time, obviously. And I think I prefer the extension a little bit more just because it starts off pretty much full screen. So you just get a little more screen real estate when using it. The third way to connect is through the Play Store app. And I've got to say, it's just not a great experience. I find it doesn't look very good. Most Play Store apps don't work very well on the Chromebook. Uh, it looks like a kind of clunky interface, like it's not really made for the Chromebook. And you also have this weird kind of toggle in the upper right corner for the mouse versus touch. I use a, a mouse with my Chromebook that I, I just can't get the hang of. I don't like it. I'm going to uninstall it, but wanted to mention it. The fourth way to access the remote PC is actually depreciated now. It's the Chrome Store app, not to be confused with the browser extension of the same exact name. But when you go there, you can actually see in the overview, it says this app is now depreciated. Please use remote desktop.google.com instead. Uh, so I never, I've never used this one. Supposedly, if you have it, you'll get a message saying it's been depreciated and you should use the website. So you can pretty much ignore this one, but wanted to mention the fourth and final way to access your PC, just in case you're coming to this with an old, an old app installed. Get rid of it and choose one of the prior three methods. I'll wrap it up, but something that's great about this is you don't need to have Chrome running on the host PC to be able to access it remotely. In fact, you can sign out of Chrome. You can delete the browser extension from Chrome. You can even reset Chrome. All of that doesn't impact the ability to remote into the PC. Now, if you ever want to stop somebody from remoting into your PC, let's say it's, you sell it or something like that, the only way to get rid of it is to uninstall Chrome Remote Desktop Host. You hit uninstall, find that program. That's what makes your PC host the remote connection. Get rid of that, and there's no more remote connection. Hope that was helpful. Love you, Papa Dukes. Good luck.